strap in, gang. We have a lot to talk about. My name's Andre the Giant. Let's take a look at the standings first of all. And the 431 races, Ernie Urban up there in the lead. Ricky Rudd has dropped to two, uh, 75 points back in fifth place. Uh, Axel Richardson. Shout out to Axel Richardson, man. Up there in the top 10. Shout out to GP Laps. Um, you can search GP Laps NASCAR and you can see he ran a big uh, championship season on NASCAR Racing 1. The predecessor to this one, obviously, if you haven't made that connection. Um... And we'll talk about uh, we'll talk about other stuff. Now the the schedule real quick. There's a the schedule. Boom, done. <laughs> you know, whatever. Now let's get to the tail of the tape here. Who does it better? We're gonna keep track of this. I've been trying to keep a you know a, a checklist. Uh, and we won't talk about all this right now. But the pit road auto break, F2 standings. We'll talk about it this race. AI wreck management. You know, we've had some bunch ups, but we'll talk about that. The clean restarts, random spin-outs, add some add, add some uh, dynamism, dynamicism to the race. Uh, collision traction. You know, as soon as you hit an AI car, you don't automatically spin out like you do in NR 2003. AI on pit road is better. You go to NR 2003, graphics, modding, customization, replay system. They're all good, but they have nothing to do with, you know, the actual feel of the race. I mean, you know, although that's debatable. The spotter's better, AI pitch strategy's better because they, they'll take on four or just fuel up while it seems like NR2 drivers uh, just do four tires and fuel every time. And yeah, and then at the bottom, things that are still up in the air, AI driver aggression, whether or not they get spooked, we've been, yeah, navigating lap traffic, we'll cover that here at Darlington. Uh, the damage threshold I talked about, and we got, we got to see how they handle super speedways, road courses in Bristol. Man, and we got other stuff to talk about. Let's send it down to Ricky Ruddy. Turn in some laps here at the Lady Too Tough to Tame. Ricky, this is Andre with ESPN Speed World. You got a copy? Hey, Andre, you magnificent bastard. Yes, I read you loud and clear. Uh, why Andre was so excited in that intro is just before loading in the track, we figured out how to... We tried one last thing in experimentation, and we have figured out how to get MIPS. Damn it! <laughs> we have figured out how to get MIPS into the game. None of the uh, none of this signage is MIPS yet, but it's going to be baby steps. And hopefully, during the intro, you may have seen the target car. That is Steve Boobs' car that we have put into the game. We've been able to figure out how to get a decent-looking paint scheme into the game. So we started with baby steps on the boobs, <laughs> and you know, I, I I wanted to come up with a a sponsor for him, and Hooters is already taken by um, Rick Mast and Target. I just figured, hey, it's going to be easy to draw a Target on this rudimentary system I'm using right now to paint on the cars, and you know, Target kind of looks like a boob, I guess. I don't know, so. We're doing that, but the mipping is unbelievable. I was able to nail that. Uh, we're gonna qualify here. I'm, uh, I'm top of the charts right now at a 30.3. They will eventually catch up to me. Um, it's tough to find a middle ground here. I'll go into this eventually. There's a way to dial in this, this difficulty really well. But rather than messing with the AI's numbers, you have to mess with you have to mess with your own wear. It's interesting, and I think I've kind of cracked that. But I didn't dig into it. I wanted to get racing, and we're gonna have a fun Darlington from some of the practice I've run. We should have a fun Darlington. So here we go. A thirty point two thirty point two seven zero is my all time best lap of all time. And we'll go to qualify. And Jeff Gordon right now, 30.4. So he's a little bit slower than my all-time best, but I was just running a 30.5 or something. And the way this difficulty set up, I'm going to have to sandbag it a little bit here on the uh, qualifying lap. Because the one thing NR2003 has NR2 beat on is being able to adjust the AI's 
qualifying speeds. You can adjust how fast or slow they go. But here, we're locked into this difficulty. This is at 99% difficulty. And we're kind of locked in to that. Get ready. Here comes the time lap. Um, where they'll always qualify at 99, and they'll actually qualify better, because I guess they're using qualifying setups or whatnot. And, um, yeah. Anyway, I gotta remember to sandbag this a little bit. If we get the pole, we might run away with the race. It's gonna be kind of a slowly work our way up the field kind of race. This actually might be a good lap. I'm going to slow up just a touch here. Yeah, 30.6. We might start top 10. But we'll get some hot action here starting in the top 10. If we do. Welcome to ESPN Speed World. Hello, everyone. I'm Jerry Punch. And I'm Andre the Giant. We here at ESPN Speed World are proud to welcome you here at Darlington Raceway for the Trans South Financial 400. I think it's just the Trans South. I don't know. Let's take a look at the starting grid. Rusty Wallace on the pole, his first pole of the season. Jeff Gordon, Kyle Petty, Terry Labonte up there. We've, we've bumped up Kyle Petty's stats. A lot of these drivers were not... We got them all up near up the, near the same kind of rating, so it's pretty cool. Bill Elliott, P11, starting P11. The aforementioned, the afore everything, Ricky Rudd, starting P13, but he's going to have to take it easy on the start. We'll talk about it when the start happens, you know. Um... Uh, and going down the list, Axel Richardson, Axel Richardson, P19 there. Uh, oh boy, what's going on here? Uh, Bill Elliott, we talked about Bill Elliott, I believe, P11. <laughs> and, uh, Steve Booth, P36, the uh, Target's jumping on board for the rest of the season with them. And Bob Dole and Janet Reno are looking to get some sponsors, but not the ideal time to look for sponsors because we're hitting short track season here, coming up. Uh, and there's, uh, there's short tracks aren't going to have 39 drivers. I don't think. I don't know. <laughs> We're taking it race by race here, folks. Pitter patter. Let's get at her. We're underway here in Darlington. 64 laps. Let's keep an eye on the field here going into uh, one and coming out of two. <laughs> you know, we have some big checkups here and you just, you don't want to take advantage of the system. These poor computer people, you know, they can't help it. Let's let, the, let's let it settle out. And then get, get to racing. The wind might be in the cars where he right here. We say that every race, I think. But yeah, 64 laps. Uh, pit window is 24 to 27 laps. So we'll see if they stand, if we, if we can stay true to that. And you see Michael Walter up here making hot moves. He's kind of our test car this season. We're going to be using him to test the ratings and the skills and whatnot in the driver info page to see what those numbers really do and don't do. And that's fine. But yeah, we're here, we're here at Darlington, babe. And in our 2003, every Darlington race, there's a dark cloud hanging over all of them because of treacherous turn three going into pits, going into the pits and coming out of the pits. Just not a good time. AI does not have a good time. They can't handle that. And we actually haven't <laughs> seen pit stops here at Darlington in our testing. But I'm thinking it's going to be fine. Michael Waltrip got held up there in that turn. Ricky Red's going to overtake him for that position. Ward Burton's also a test car. 
He's where he's up here in the top ten. And uh, anyway, we'll send it down to Hot Ricky Red. All right, thanks, Andre. Like the worst possible time to send it to me here. I had to pause the game and save the replay. Just as I was going side by side with Sterling Marlin into the turn. All right, looks like the AI is having a little bit of an issue sometimes coming out of that turn. Michael Waltrip a few laps ago or whenever that was. But yeah. Um, man, just a lot. I'm just so excited about the mipping situation, man. Oh, nothing can bring me down right now. Except um, I can't remember if I turned damage off here. I wanted to turn it off because the Darlington Stripe is more than enough to, to kill your race. You don't have to limp around the rest of the race after damage. You get, you get, you get sucked on this wall and you're there. You cannot get off of it. And Rick Mass in the pits. Now, see that down there the, in the standings? Pit. That's why NR2 wins the standings battle against NR2003. They don't have, there's no pit indicators in the NR2003 standings. Right now, we know Rick Mass is in the pits, probably having a, a deal, some kind of deal. And then we got live standings right there. And. It's just better. Sorry. Sorry, not sorry. Um, and for hardcore hardcore viewers that know my history with NR 2003, we got a slow car ahead. That's another car. No, that might still be Rick Mast coming out of the pits because these are two pits. Yeah, Rick Mast coming out of the pits. Um... He might have fallen off during the, the the hot intro. We might have been able to pick up on that. What do you say? Oh, probably, probably you're racing the 94 car because there was a lapper there for a second. Um, oh, damn it. What was I going to say? I was talking about the standings. Oh, yeah. Um, once upon a time, I wanted to kind of map my key, like make a script download a script that can record you know me pressing F2 and then using greater land to go down the standings um, and I'm it didn't work in enter 2003 I want to see if it's gonna work in this one where just randomly every five minutes my computer will simulate hitting F2 and then go down the standings automatically so we don't just statically stay where I'm at over there you know I can do it right now manually but I'd rather not worry about it. It'd actually be pretty cool to have our own little working ticker. You know? What I want to test as well is, you know, we've had issues with not knowing if we're, if we've cleared a car. Meaning, you know, going into the turns. The Rusty Wallace wreck, Wally Dollenback kind of wreck, Ricky Craven. So, I want to figure out how we know for sure that they will let up. For example, Bill Elliott here. We're gonna get beside him. Do we have to? Does his does his front tire have to disappear and then we, you know, something like that? Like if if his if his front tire disappears out of review, that means we got him. Like he will not try to make a move. I don't know. We got we got a lot to figure out. Jeff Gordon in the lead out here. He's trying to come back after his just awful start to the season. Rusty Wallace, I've been able to bump his stats up. Here, I just bu I bumped his stats up because he's not performing as well as I want him to. Because my thought process coming into the season was, hey, have those cons have those consistent top ten drivers, sure, but make sure you have three or four that stand out above them a little bit because racing for a championship those guys that are all the same ratings up there they'll cannibalize each other while we kind of run away with the points a little bit that's my thought process behind that but i'm just figuring hey who cares you know 
if we run away with the championship, then we keep everything and we handicap ourselves like we do in our NR2003 season. Oh, because we'll be running other seasons on this game. Believe it. it it's not, uh, you know, it's not because she's just the, the new girl in town. NASCAR Racing 2. I mean, I, it, it's, it's not, it's, obviously not a true racing you know racing sim by 2023 standards but it is a blast you have to learn how to race a little bit differently but you just remember that you're you're in a game just calm down <laughs> like this is the foundation of a lot of current racing games we're on lap 16 pit stops coming lap 24 and I think Andre mentioned about navigating lap traffic and you'll see here at Darlington in my tests I've run when these leaders get to lap traffic it's just bad news they just can't get around them that well and we're probably gonna have to deal with that at Bristol as well And as far as tuning in this AI, I am, I'm taking her a little bit easy because I don't know if damage is on or off and I don't want to go up into the wall. Um, but that's, a, that's something I'll go into eventually or I want to make a video about. I want to do a little bit more testing before I go crazy with the actual explanation of the I and I files and how to really dial dial it in uh, have a competitive uh, have a competitive you know uh, tire window or whatnot what I want to do is start racing side by side because that's where this Darlington shines man the AI will not get they get spooked if, you, if they're on the outside we've seen that kind of issue already with uh, I think Ward Burton and Michael Waltrip but if I'm on the outside and they're on the inside, they go, we're wheel to wheel coming out of the turn and it is awesome. I'm gonna try to get it going right here. Yeah, see what I mean? And then they'll they'll come up the track and it, you, you, you kind of got to read, you got to read the idea that they're going to be coming up the track, so you better slow down. They are going. That's the aggressiveness rating. We, I still want to test that. Bad turn for Ward Burton, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to beat him through the turns here. Look at him not getting spooked. He's like, bring it on, Jack. And then I had to stay up high, and I got scared. I didn't want to drive too close to him. Didn't want to wreck. And yeah, it feels like, it probably seems like I'm faster than them here, but I have to get a good run, and this is not enough to, to, to throw that in there on him. He's coming down, he doesn't care. And he's gonna come up the track, yep. NR 2003, they wouldn't do that. They know, they, they give you more mercy, and they'll give you that line. Here, they say, no man. I love that. But yeah, I'm all about a game like this. If it's if it's something you're not used to, you know how they drive or whatever. I don't care. It, it, it goes with anything in life, really. You give me the set of rules and what can and can't be done and the consistency in which something, you know, the rules are consistently applied, whether it's the rules of physics in the game, whether it's whatever, then I'm a fan. I'll learn the system. We have two pit roads here. The one thing I miss, Enter 2003 and Enter uh, N2, probably should just start calling it N2. Um, I think the ES, the EA Sports games did, and I know you Technics did. They would call out, "Hey, that car in front of you is heading into the pits." 
so you don't get surprised by just an abrupt turn into pit road. And you can see how seamless that was. They just dove down to pit road, nice and sexy like. I love it. So I'm on the front stretch, and let's not forget we're at Darlington 1996 style, where turns one and two, or turns three and four, and vice versa. Looks like Mark Martin's pitting. We'll see if we can match his. Well, they both are pitting, and we'll see if we can if we can match. Yeah. Yeah, auto brake. We Andre mentioned auto brake in the intro. You can always just turn it on, not have it on, but it's great to have it on. You don't have to worry about speeding on pit road against these computer people who never speed on pit road. So why should I be penalized for, you know, farting around and, I don't know. Okay. I don't know how fast they go on this apron. And well, you don't know if, if any cars are coming down to pit, so we're good. Okay. All right, we're seeing some new cars. John Smith. Uh, there's Earnhardt, so we may have gained some spot. We may have gained a spot or two here. Who'd we pit with? Dale Jarrett? Dale Jarrett was running with us, right? Okay, let's be careful. Okay, here, there's some weirdness here. No big deal. They handled it. There's Ward Burton. We passed him a few laps ago. Now you see, okay, Bobby Labonte coming out of pit road, I think. Or did he pit with us? I thought he pitted with us. I think that was the GOAT, Steve Boobs. All right, now you can see cars are getting jumbled up here. This is, these are the leaders having trouble with lap traffic. Terry Labonte with a four second lead on the field right now. Man, looks like Rick, Rick Mass is beat up in the rear view. When he was closer, I could see his some of the front of his car was missing. This is a relatively short race by our standards. 64 laps, about 30 seconds a lap. It's only like a 30 minute race give or take, you know. So it might not go to commercial because the, the action is too good. I, I, the, the commercials are funny and everything, but I don't know. All right, these leaders are having trouble with Steve Boobs and Wally Dolan back. We have Dave Marcus here, do we? I don't know. See, and then the braking is my, I can't brake as well as them. So then if I brake harder than I should, they'll be like, well, he's not there anymore. Rusty Wallace. I just saw him flash into the pits on the standings. We'll keep an eye on the bottom, see what's happening there. We'll try not to abuse this here. Are they going to wreck up here? And now that I think about it, the one big thing that's been missing is AI wrecking each other. And of course, we've seen the ghosting where they'll ghost into each other when they get close and, you know, like when they're slowing down for a wreck. Um, 
But right now, Bobby Labonte up there. Uh, no, I got I got distracted by Dave Marcus here. But you know what? You know what I was saying there. We haven't seen the AI spin out another car, and I actually don't think we're going to see it. In all my testing that I've done, I don't think we're going to see it. And I think that's why they put in the spin, the random spin outs, because they're like, that's the only way we're going to get cautions. So that we're going to simulate wrecks, you know. And it is what it is, you know. That is not detracting from the fun of the game at all. I'm trying to be a gentleman about this. Yeah, it's frustrating, and yeah, we can just dive bomb on Wally Dolan back and drive him a little bit hard and pass him, which we're going to do right here. Thank God for those buildings, because that's what turn in three and four is now at Darlington, and it's the tighter end of the track. The other end of the track up here, it's it's a little bit wider and freer. And you have more room to coast through the turn. You'll you'll see what I mean. Trouble in turn three. All right, that was just where we just were, so no problem. And again, as I said, those leaders have just taken off. Steve Boobs holding up the show. We'll get we'll get on the uh, whatever stretch this is coming up. It's gonna be the front stretch. We'll get on the front stretch and see what that wreck was. Oh my goodness, great stuff. And I, I forget everything. But I tell you, I found a key. I found a uh, shortcut key. Shift L takes you takes you back lap by lap. And we have an L takes you forward a lap. And he said a wreck in turn three, but I forget what lap that was. And that's when we had just left turn three. It's just it's impossible to find it. The incident thing doesn't work because I'm clicking incident and it just takes me to the beginning and end of the, the, the file. The incident thing does not work unless you're on the car who has the incident. And we didn't call out when that happened. But I knew we were coming out of... I knew we were coming out of four when we got the call out. And it's probably just going to be a, it's probably just going to be a spin. So let's use our, let's use another system to find it. It's, you know, just fast forward, you know, tap through this if you don't want to deal with it. But I guess Rusty Wallace, are we going to be able to see his issue? Yeah, it looks like he's coming out of the pits here. And then we'll go to incident. Yep. So he, when he wrecked, yeah, he just spun out in the lead. He spun out in the lead. Almost took out Terry Labonte. Let's check out Terry Labonte's wreck avoidance there. Man, just, uh, yeah. It is what it is. But we're talking... Well, we gotta find it now. We're... we're we're this far. I just, I just can't remember. Can't remember when we got the call out. Or like what lap or who was near me. And it was in turn three. It's going to be a eureka moment when we find it. Or let's do this. Because it happened behind. Terry Labonte's going to lap us here eventually. Because it happened behind us. We can probably just latch on to a car that was near us back behind us and they're going to drive through it eventually or there's going to be a car slow something's going to stick out here no son of a bitch no 
We got to find it. Maybe I was way too far behind me. This might be good. I don't think it was I don't think it was going to be Axel Richardson anyway. Oh, there you go. John Smith. We found it, gang. Oh, thanks. It was not worth the time. You see Ricky Rudd up there, so this was our this was our new thought process or our new strategy that worked out. And John Smith with a spin. I don't know if he's pitting. Nobody cares. Where are we at here? All right. Uh, Mark Martin. We'll let him go. Terry Labonte. Yeah, he's not lapping us. We're only 9-3 back. Rusty Wallace is two laps down. No DNFs yet. Here we go. All right, let's, let's, let's keep an eye on Mark Martin. How does he handle Steve Boobs? Not well. When Steve Boobs has that low line, Mark Martin takes that line that Michael Waltrip and Ward Burton did, and then he gets hung up. Oh, no, Mark Martin says, nope. All right, now make your move, Mark Martin. Make your move on Steve Boobs. I'm gonna see if I can push him. Nope. Unfortunately, we're going to pass Steve Boobs and run away from the field here. Or maybe we have to be the wedge. We have to be the car that, that, that gets the AI, that gets the lapper out of the way, and then everyone else can continue and get past them. It's just the initial get out of our way that I got. I have to do. Now that, I'm on my own, now that I'm on my own, I forget how to run the track. So let's see what the interval is. We're 9-5 behind Labonte. Um, looks like he's dealing with Ricky Craven. Uh, who would this be? Who would the slow car be? Who would the slow car be? Unless that's John Smith. Yep. I was trying to get an accurate, you know, interval, seeing if we're picking up on the leaders or not, but because Terry Labonte's Terry dealing with lap traffic, it, it's not going to be... Um, it's not going to be a reliable indication on how well we're running with the leaders here. We just gained 1.2 seconds. Or use how about use this gauge? Jeff Gordon ahead of us, 3.2. I guarantee we're going to be gaining, damn it, we're going to be gaining time on him here. Okay, the next three cars in front are all four positions. <laughs> we just gained 1.2 seconds. Or he might be dealing with lap, it's just tight traffic, I don't know. It might just be the difficulty was too easy here. It's a work in progress. Unfortunately, that means we'll have to bump up the difficulty for the second half of the season. Yeah, this difficulty might have been too easy. We really caught up to them. I'm still running almost near personal best late, later in the run. And I can fix that with my tire wear settings in the INI file. And we'll eventually we'll eventually tackle that. But no, I mean we're, we're going to settle in here, study the AI, and uh, we'll, we'll uh, go to commercial. Excellent stuff, Ricky. Excellent stuff. After 42 of 64 laps, Terry Labonte in the lead. He's up to 2.9 seconds above Jeff Gordon right now. Ricky Red has snuck into the top five. Uh, and, uh, yeah, unbelievable. Ernie Irvin. Where's Dale Jarrett? Oh, we'll go to the back half of the standings here. Uh, Dale Jarrett, P8. 
Ward Burton, P9. Ward Burton's one of those cars that ESPN Speed World bumped up his ratings a little bit, so he's running P9. And Cal Petty, P10. We haven't seen him too much in the top 10. He's had some good starts, but uh, we bumped his numbers up as well. Bill Elliott running P13 right now. And no big names having a bad uh, go over here, except for Rusty Wallace. Rusty Wallace down there in P37 right now. Two laps down. But oh man, this is just awesome racing. Uh, but uh, stay tuned, we're going to be back uh, with more action here at Darlington, here in the Trans South 400. Uh, we're coming up on pit stops on lap 48, so that's going to be some good stuff. On Unhappily Ever After, Jack's got a new roommate. Giant rat! Now, he'll sacrifice anything to get out of the basement. Even his kids. Don't kill that rat. <laughs> we'll be at the Pancake House. Unhappily Ever After, Wednesday on the WB. All right, folks. We're back here at Darlington. We're on lap 47 in the running of the Trans South 400 here on ESPN Speed World. We have pit stops coming up. And we're going to stay with the live coverage here through the pit stops. You're getting some aerial footage right now from the America Online Copter Cam. America Online. Uh, <laughs> you've got mail. I think, yeah. Was that, was that MSN? I can't remember. You've got mail. Anyway. You know, in our 2003, we would be worried about all this. We would worry, we'd be worried about wrecks and cautions, but no, we're just worried about having a good pit stop. Not worried about wrecks. Ricky Rudd right now is following Jeff Gordon. He's going to pit with Jeff Gordon. And we're going to get a really good, uh, really good uh, test of how well the AI pits. See if we can just go come in and out with Jeff Gordon on the same page. That would be hot stuff. Or Ricky could, not we. I'm not down there. All right, Jeff Gordon pitting. Ricky Rudd pitting, but he... Probably the body gives him the business. But he's gonna get into pit road. <laughs> well, we found a problem a little bit here. Uh, oh boy. But I don't know. We'll, we'll, ch we'll check the tape. See what happened there. <laughs> go, 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 go! Watch your speed now. Keep it on 6,500. 6,500. Hope Ricky's okay. Okay, the leader is pitting now. Probably Bonnie really just shoved it in his butt. 6,500. And pushed him up the track, but he was still able to, to sneak down into the pits without getting a black flag for going backward. Ricky, you gotta turn off that auto brake. There you go. You're like in like 90th place right now. No, did Dale Earnhardt just pass you? You're still with Jeff Gordon? I think. Yeah, Jeff Gordon's right there. So, I mean, <laughs> I'm not sure what happened there. But that's that's our first real NR2, NR2 hiccup with the AI. Bobby Bonnie was actually inside Ricky Brett's car. Here's Mark Martin. Let's, let's, let's hope Ricky Brett's careful down there with Mark Martin. Ernie Irvin in the lead after pit stops, folks. 1.2 seconds ahead of Terry Labonte. We were hoping Terry Labonte was going to stay in the stay in the lead because we've had four different win winners this season: Dale Jarrett, uh, Ernie Irvin at Richmond, or uh, Mark Martin at Rockingham, Ernie Irvin at Richmond, Jeff Gordon at Atlanta. So we've had four different winners. We wanted a fifth different winner here. Have that awesome parody, but. 
You may not get it. Sorry, the bunny's right up here with uh, where Ricky Rudd's at. So anyway, we'll see what Ricky thinks about what happened. Hopefully, hopefully he's okay. Hopefully none of that Bobby Labonte's car morphed into his body. But here, hey, Ricky, how you doing? Yeah, thanks, Andre. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta find better times to throw it down to me here. So I'm not just jumping into a turn as soon as you, as soon as you send it back to me. We're all right. But yeah, I don't know. Seems like we don't have collision detection. Or that we do have collision detection on pit road when the AI doesn't. I think that's what's going on there. Mark Martin, what a bastard. I had to play ball with him there. So yeah, Ernie Urban, you can see Steve Boob's holding up the show again here. And we're, we're, I'm getting a good finish here. I'm not worried about getting the win. I, my first win, I want it to be, I want it to be memorable. Not just the, hey, we had a cheap, we had an easy difficulty and ran away with it. But we're still learning about the game. I'm trying to get an idea on how they handle these lappers. Not well. That's something NR 2003 does a little bit better. But also, this is the first time we've seen it pretty bad. Just in Darlington might just be an outlier. It might, it might just be a weird track. They just can't get enough speed out of the turns to do something. And we got John Smith coming up here as well. And I got somebody behind me. Probably, yeah. Uh, Morgan Shepard, I think. Ken Schrader's not showing up. That's the other green car, but he's... I don't know. Ward Burton's five seconds back. Dale Jarrett's back in P8. Still a top ten. But we only have six laps to go here. See you later, Steve Boots. Terry Labonte up there trying to get around. John Smith. We'll see if we can get this spot back from Mark Martin. Mark Martin's going to be held up by John Smith, or is he going to cut inside? Nope. So there we go. Doesn't seem like there's a fix for this. Probably why this difficulty ended up seeming easy. Because I didn't factor in, I don't know, it seems like the, the AI being slowed up really factors in, you know, how fast they go. Where am I at? I'm, I'm top five. I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable with the top five. Let's not steal too many points. And we got lucky with whatever happened with the Bobby Labonte thing. If I was 10 more feet down the track, I couldn't, I would have had to have gone all the way around the pit. But I still, I was able to sneak in there. And I do want to test how forgiving the going backward black flag is. If you, if you even get black flag. Which I think you do. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? But. Oh man, it's, 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 it's a lot of fun. It is, as I was talking about earlier, you just gotta put yourself in the world and know the limitations and kind of play ball with what they do. But we'll give you some hot racing here at the end, side-by-side side side stuff with the Intimidator. But he intimidated me there, I was not, I was not gonna mess with that. And see, he cuts this off, I can't get above him. I'm not gonna be able to dive below him. I'm gonna go to the high side here if he lets me and see if we can do something this way. Oh, 
<laughs> I love it. That was him. I mean, that was me saying, "Well, shit, he's gonna come up the track," and that might be the that might be the aggression rating, the aggressiveness, or whatever. I want to roll up my sleeves and find what goes on with that too. Janet Reno, or Pats and Janet Reno, haven't really come across her all race. Ernie Irvin looks like he's gonna get the win here. We'll keep we'll keep that up just to be safe because we, we missed out on Ernie Irvin's first win. And what I'll start doing is just start throwing random parts of the race in the replay at the... Oh, is this Ernie Irvin up here? Wait a minute. Yeah, he's right here. So he got held up by those lappers, and that, this would have been a race for the win, but Ernie Irvin's going to get it. Barely. So, yeah, the first little hiccup in N2 with the... I'll make a note of it. Lappers at Darlington, they do not like it. And off the top of my head, I can't think of a fix for it. Well, now I'm thinking maybe, unfortunately, when we come to... Darlington, we gotta we gotta chop off five or six cars off the field, like the real slow turds. And that might mitigate that. Yeah. Gotta give and take. Alright, Idris. Good uh, uh, yeah, the car done right, man. We just uh didn't want to take a cheap win. Still got a top five, still got collected still uh, amassed those valuable Winston Cup points. That's all that matters. All right, let's take a look at the results. Firstly, the NHL 95 music's playing right now. What's been happening is I've been getting copyright dinged for even for these MIDI files I've been playing. I get copyright dinged only for the songs at the end um, that are playing because the algorithm or whatever, the bots pick it up. But all the other songs at the beginning and going to commercial, they don't get picked up. And I think it's because of Andre's voice being pitched down, my voice being pitched down. Um, and the bots can't, they can't find it in that. Um, but I just want to avoid copyright dings. Basically, I don't want ads showing up on these. Uh, I'm not worried about making money and it's just foolish if, you know, they're on there and other people are making money. I don't know. It's just, it's not, not a huge deal. Uh, but looking at these standings, Ernie Irvin got that win, second win of the season. Uh, but Terry Labonte, Terry Labonte and Jeff Gordon tied for the most laps led this race with 23. And I'll, I'll, I'll start throwing in the NASCAR 2 manual pages uh, in the sidebar. And this, they have a nice page there with the standings all laid out, like the point system. And looking at it, it looks like Terry Labonte gets the extra but five bonus points because he finished ahead of Jeff Gordon. They both didn't get extra five bonus points for leading the most laps, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, Ward Burton led a lap here. He's one of our test cars, or he led two laps here. He's one of our test cars. Dale Jarrett up there in the points, finished top ten. Axel Richardson, hello. P11, Bill Elliott, we've been bumping him up. Yeah, that's kind of where Bill should be. Maybe bump him up a little bit more. Jeff Burton laying low, man. We never talk about Jeff Burton. Uh, Michael Waldrop, another test car. I gotta fiddle with him some more. Um, and over on the right, yeah, cars a lap down. We didn't see Ken Schrader all this race, thank God. Uh, Rusty Wallace led a lap, led two laps in the early going, but uh, had that wreck. And you see Rick Mass three laps down. Thankfully, I was able to catch that in the uh, in, in the you know the start of the race. We knew he had DNF'd after and went into the pits. And I was able to catch that on the uh, when I was doing the replay. So okay, for those that are, uh, thanks for everybody watching, all the new people watching and checking it out. Uh, I think I got linked somewhere, or it's really pop. Uh, people are liking the video and it's popping up in uh, algorithms and whatnot. Hope you're enjoying it. Um, just trying to get us to Christmas, you know. Um, 
I, I, I do want a steady upload schedule. This is going up. Uh, Atlanta posted Monday morning. This is going up Tuesday night. I do want to stay within, you know, one video every 24 hours at least. Because this, this only took two hours to edit, and I'm still refining the process. I think once we hit the 10 race mark, this is going to be, uh, we're going to be cruising with uploads. And it's just going to be a matter of me ha my having to take a little bit of a few days off just to stay fresh, especially when we start hitting tracks a second time and we're more familiar with the tracks. I don't want to just dominate. But, uh, you know, I have some mipping to do. We, we painted the car. That's done. Now I want to mip a track, have it looking good, and uh, might be Sears Point. Because that's, that's a few races off and I'll have time to, you know, mess with it and have it looking pretty good. Uh, that'll be good. That's race 10, I think, or 11. But we got the short tracks coming up. Bristol, Martinsville, North Wilkesboro. Then we got Talladega. We're going to see what Super Speedway Racing is about. And it's not the same as NR2003. NR2003 beats NR2 in that department. But we'll get to that. All right. Hey, thanks for watching. See you at Bristol.